Welcome to Shenandoah National Park. I'm Ranger Caitlin. From the beginning of existence, humans have been changing their immediate environment. Building shelter to keep out the elements, creating fire to banish the darkness. But often, the way we change our environment around us makes it a little better for us, but may affect our wildlife neighbors a little negatively. Or even maybe our human neighbors. Have you ever had a street light shine right into your bedroom window? Do you feel uncomfortable in the dark? It is natural for us to feel a little uncomfortable in the dark. Maybe, maybe not now, maybe when you were younger, but we don't have the best night vision. We don't have the greatest hearing at night either, but there's something that appears at night. They have a lot of different names. Fire bobs, fire bugs, moon bugs, fire devils, and more. In the United States, they typically are called lightning bugs or fireflies. So I'll be using both of those. Fireflies are on almost every continent except for Antarctica. There are 2,000 species worldwide. And scientists can trace all of those species back to one single ancestor 150 million years ago. In the United States and Canada, there are about 200 different species. Here in the United States, every state has one, has a species, except for the state of Hawaii. The highest concentration of species in the United States is in the Southeast. So here in Virginia, like a Shenandoah National Park. We don't know how many species there are currently in Shenandoah National Park, but visitors enjoy seeing them here in the months of June, July, and a little bit of August. Ecotourism for watching fireflies is becoming very popular. In the United States, during a two to three week period, 30,000 people go to Great Smoky Mountains National Park to view the synchronized fireflies down there, just in two to three weeks. It's so popular that now they have to have a lottery system to, only, to limit the number of people coming to view them. In Taiwan, 90,000 people travel a year to see the Ying Hong Chong. For centuries in Japan, it's been a favorite pastime to travel the countryside and view the Hotaro. They certainly attract our attention. But what are these little bugs? Are they bugs? Are they flies? Firefly, lightning bug. Fireflies are actually beetles. They're part of the lamprey family, which means they have a soft body. If you've ever caught a firefly, you know they're kind of squishy. They have a soft body and soft wing shell that protects the back of their head and their wings along their back. Lightning bugs are split into three different groups. Glowworms, dark fireflies, and flashing fireflies, which this would be a lot cooler if you could see my flashing firefly. <laughs> All species do glow as a worm, and they go through a complete metamorphosis and have four different life stages, from an egg to a larval, pupae, and then to the adult firefly that many of us may have spent catching when we were younger during the summer. Lightning bugs lay their eggs in the soil, and when they hatch, the larvae are like sharks of the ground, of the soil. They hunt down, subdue, and devour prey. That's three times their size, like earthworms, snails, and slugs. They actually inject an immobilizing toxin, and then a digestive enzyme is inserted, and that creates that little creature into a nice soupy drink to drink up. So, anybody want a earthworm shake? Snail smoothie? I mean, it's not too bad. The larval stage of fireflies is their longest lifespan, is their largest life stage. They look like little worms that can crawl. And depending on where they're at in the world, depends on how long that lifespan is. It can be anywhere between a few months to a couple years. But most of their time is spent down in the soil or in the leaf litter on the ground of the woods. Firefly habitat 
ranges all across the world, but it has one thing in common, moisture. Here in Shenandoah National Park, some of the best places to see fireflies are on the edges of open areas and the woods. As adults, their lifespan is very short, typically only a few weeks. What do you think an adult firefly eats? They don't. The main purpose of a, a firefly, once it becomes an adult, is to find a mate and reproduce. So they don't eat. Most species don't eat anything as adults. The band queen says that fat bottom girls make the rockin' world go round. But it's really the bright bottom boys that make the lightning bugs world go round. The bright bottoms of the firefly is actually a chemical reaction happening right inside their lower abdomen. Inside they have the looser fist enzyme that interacts with looser fin and oxygen. Tongue twisters, very much so. But when all these little chemicals mix together, it produces a light. Firefly light is the most efficient bioluminescent creature in the world. Their light is actually four times more efficient than a typical incandescent light bulb. Before these chemicals were created synthetically, researchers and scientists would actually pay people a penny per lightning bug to collect them, to turn them in. These little chemicals inside have been used to help study heart disease and cancer research and more. Their glow informs predators that they're toxic and they don't taste very good. Throughout time though, their glow has become how they find a mate. Some species have a green light, it ranges from red to yellow, orange. There's even a species that has a blue glow as well. But how do scientists tell these 2,000 species of lightning bugs apart? It's all in their light patterns. How long they flash for and the duration of time between the periods of flash is how you identify fireflies. So let's play a game. You're gonna be a firefly. Get a flashlight. Any size will do. Or you can get a little firefly as well. Every six seconds, make a J with your flashlight starting from the bottom, going up. Starting from the bottom, going up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, Six. You were just a Photinus perlalis, which is again another tongue twister, but more commonly known as the common eastern firefly or the big dipper firefly, often seen at dusk. The flashing light and patterns are the males. Those are usually the ones that we see, the ones that you may have captured growing up when you were younger. And they are looking down in the tall grass or along the ground for the females. Now the females respond in the same pattern to the males, but usually not as bright. So they're kind of harder to find. If you remember, I mentioned that not all species of fireflies glow. Some are active during the daylight and they use pheromones instead. Instead of the males sending out a light to attract the females, what happens is the females will climb to a tall piece of grass, tree trunk, and they will emit a pheromone into the air. And the flying males then find it and find their way back to the female. While lightning bugs are out looking for a mate, scientists believe that we are seeing less and less of them. Are we outshining our little friends? Light pollution and habitat loss are the two biggest threats to firefly populations. Adding in an outside light 
can be just as damaging to the environment as physically removing plants and soil. Having a regular cycle of both dark and light helps maintain proper cell function, stress levels, hormone production, and more, both in plants, animals, and in us too. How many of you have ever been a little extra stressed if you don't get your full amount of sleep every night? Dark nights are even needed for some animals to mate, lightning bugs, to hunt, or to migrate from different to different locations. Lightning bug species have different time periods when they emerge. Some emerge at dusk when the sun is just setting and some only emerge when it's completely dark out, flashing their lights, looking for a mate. Too much light and improper light fixtures creates sky glow, light trespass, and glare. So sky glow is a form of light pollution that you can see at any of our overlooks at night, looking down into the valley. It's that extra light that comes up from civilization. Having light, a night light or an outside light, just pointed anywhere spreads the light out into places where it's not needed, light trespass. And glare, as you can imagine, is when the light is too bright for our eyes to be able to adjust. I mentioned before, we don't have the greatest night vision, but we do have a little bit. But if a light is too bright, it doesn't allow time for our eyes to adjust to the natural darkness that's around. Other ways that you can help firefly populations at home is by leaving some areas of taller grass or planting large flowering plants along the edges of your yard. Maybe like milkweed, like you see out at Big Meadows here at Shenandoah National Park. When visiting Shenandoah, please be mindful about the light that you use at night. Make sure you only point it where you need it. So if you're walking, point it down where your feet are at and use it minimally. Also, be mindful of where you're walking. Remember that the females, typically in the grass or on the ground, responding to the males putting on the show. Viewing fireflies is something that we can share with people all across the world, and even here in Shenandoah National Park. Who would have thought that these small little insects, well, even smaller than this, would be so unique, be so worldwide, be great indicators of habitat health and dark skies. Just these little bugs that we love seeing for a few months of the year.